Uh, thank you, thank you so much, Victor. But you know, Victor, of course, is a Russian name. And Pirko, after all, is Ukrainian, so I must talk in Russian accent. But for now, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for having me out here this morning. <laughs> there are several times that a speaker does not want to speak, or at least is invited to speak and then wonders about their time frame. The three that I just recognized earlier are the fact that there are, you don't want to do it before lunch, because everybody's hungry. You don't want to do it after lunch because everybody is anxious to get out and get some sleep because they've just eaten a big meal. You don't want to do it at the end of the day because everybody's anxious to leave. Well, I'm going to add just before the first break in the morning because everybody's still got coffee on board. <laughs> Thank God we've got a timer. That's all I've got to say. Anyway, my subject today is about cybersecurity. I would like to say that this is in fact a, a a tough subject to talk about, but I love this subject. I love talking about this because there's so many opportunities available. As Victor pointed out, there's so many different things we can do with this. What I want to start with is the fact that, do you know what cybersecurity is? Okay, I'm going to walk you through something really quick. Information is available and is out there, and the internet is such a powerful weapon to be able to get information together. But information can take on several different forms. For you, young lady, it might mean the fact that you want to find your bank account in the morning. For you, young man, it might mean that you need to find some particular piece of reference for your work. For you, young man, it, oh, I'm not going to tell them what you're thinking about. Um, because you shouldn't go to those sites, really, okay? Just, just you shouldn't go there. Uh, but the, the point is, information is necessary and available, and everybody is looking for it today, and they have great ways to look for it. Usually when they're looking for information, they're using an information technology to be able to do that. As a matter of fact, we all now carry these wonderful little devices that can practically get us any piece of information we need anywhere we are in the world. And so the information, the cyber domain that I'm going to talk about is the marriage between that information that's out there and the, and the IT or the information technology that it rides on. So that's the marriage that's called the cyber domain. And what I want to talk about is how you secure that, how you make that able to be so the information that you want and need or have is not available to those that you don't want to have it. Okay, so that's just a real brief definition of cybersecurity. Do you know, though, however, that it does affect you directly? Why? Because you are out there on the internet. Your children are out there on the internet. Your business is out there on the internet. There are ways that you want information or sharing information or processing information that are important to everybody sitting here. Everybody sitting here. So what we try to do is understand how we're going to secure this in a way that actually adds to our capability here. So if we look at the fact that San Antonio is on the forefront of a lot of our nation's efforts to secure critical information. My son is a 21-year-old is a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps. Just returned from Afghanistan two weeks ago. Thank the Lord above. But information to him is different. Information to him means mission prosecution and the possibility of keeping himself and his team safe and alive. So information takes on a very specific domain, and there is, a, there is an effort in San Antonio to be able to protect information, including our nation's security information. So we have to remember that's a very key point to what we're doing here in San Antonio. But you all have a role to play. Why do I say that? Because each one of you, I like to say, are our nation's strongest defense of, of cybersecurity, but each and every single one of you is also our nation's weakest link. Why? Because that ability for someone to get into your system, to get into your information, to get into your computer, is what could lead to a further linkage out to someone else, or to somewhere else they really shouldn't be. So we really all do have a role to play in this. So what I want to finish up with on this particular issue is the fact that there really is, there is a huge potential now to work on an economic and a workforce engine that can, be, that can build San Antonio up in a lot of different ways. How do we get here? Back in the 1950s, the Air Force established what they called the Air Force Security Service out on uh, Kelly Air Force Base on Security Hill. Now, a lot of you may not know that. A lot of you may not know that, in fact, right now, the Air Force has, of a couple of years ago, placed their newest command, their cyber command, at Lackland Air Force Base. There was a team of volunteers, and there's a, I hope there's a gentleman in the audience by the name of Chris Cook. Chris, can you raise your hand if you're out there, please? I want to know that you're here. He and a group of individuals from the, uh, from the Chamber of Commerce decided to pull together facts that would make the Air Force understand that the cyber command had to come to San Antonio. And he did. And there were a lot of great facts that included why the military presence here is so fantastic, but it also included cost of living. It also included the great weather, although we're drier than all get out. But it included this great capability of, of communications. It created this great capability of transportation. All the reasons we love to live in San Antonio. 
and he pulled this group together and was able to get the 24th Air Force here. And that is a stepping stone to what I'm going to talk about even further. We also have an NSA component here, but we won't talk about the NSA because I get in all kinds of trouble when I do. They come to my house and start going, Mr. Perko, why were you talking about us today? Um, we talk about the fact that there are joint forces. There are Marines, Air Force, Army, Navy that are out there that are also a part of this. We talk about the fact that there is a growth not only in these military sectors, but there are, there are defense contractors and others who are providing jobs to everyday citizens in San Antonio to be able to help with this particular problem. So this has been here since the 50s. What is simply that what we are doing today, though, is we're building on that. We're actually building in, there are 80-plus defense contractors and other small businesses that are engaged in this. And we're recognizing that it's not only a military issue, but it is also an economic issue for, let's say, oh, one of the other businesses in town, tourism. How would tourism relate to cybersecurity? Do you want to have your credit card information taken from you when you're at a hotel or a restaurant? So the tourism industry does, in fact, have an aspect of cybersecurity. Healthcare, electronic medical records, great example of a reason to have that. There are other things in other industries, not just the, the, the military and the government issue, that worry about cybersecurity. And so we have to be concerned about that and how we can build that up in San Antonio and use that as an engine. Eight billion, with a B, billion, billions and billions of dollars of information that is in fact, or IT related uh, income has been impacted in San Antonio. That was, that was two years ago. In the future, we recognize we're going to see an awful lot more of that. Okay, so, in, so now what we're talking about is the fact that we have these economic engines available. Our workforce in San Antonio, get this one, this is a great fact, our workforce is second only to the D.C. area in terms of cybersecurity expertise and capability. Second only to D.C. in San Antonio. Did it, how many of you knew that before coming into here? Okay, I've got maybe a handful. So I hope I've taught you something today in this, in this particular area. What I'm talking about is this is a nationally recognized capability, though. It's powerful, adaptable, and it's all here in San Antonio. So what do I need to talk about now? I need to talk about creation of wealth. Everybody today is very concerned about job creation. You can watch the television at any given point, and it's all about job creation. Now, I'm not here to be a politician and tell you I'm here to solve and give you the great panacea for our job situation. Well, I believe I could, but I won't bore you with those facts. But the point is wealth creation. Let's talk about human wealth first. Part of this is the fact that we talk about education being the greatest human wealth there is. There actually are some great programs in the high school level, all through the community college level, all the way up through the university level, that are now dealing in cybersecurity and are providing specific examples of building this human wealth and the capability to provide these services and these capabilities to the community and to the greater community across the nation and, in fact, internationally. So we have that here in San Antonio. I'm going to touch upon one real quick. The Alamo Colleges, the community colleges here in town, established a program with some of the high schools called the Alamo Academies. There are four of them. There's aerospace, manufacturing, healthcare, and then information technology and security. What this program does is takes high school juniors and seniors, and during their junior and senior year, brings them into this academy on Kelly Air Force Base, or Port San Antonio. And in fact, it teaches them for half a day every day they come out of this, though, with 24 credit hours of community college credit for free. Okay? For free. So that is but one example of how, and there are, there are at least four other examples of high schools in town that are doing similar things in the high schools to be able to encourage this type of education. It's, called, it's, it's really focused on what's called STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay, and it's focusing our efforts on how we give our kids those kind of skills to be able to learn, not just teach to a test. How many are tired of teaching to the test mentality? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I won't get on my soapbox about that particular issue. But the point is we're trying to encourage this type of education at the high school level and even before, and then show them pathways through community colleges to a certification to a job through the university system to a certification to a job, through the graduate system to a certification and a job, but we can show them these pathways when they're in high school and get them excited about it. So that's human wealth. Economic wealth, we talk about the fact that we can create jobs, we can get small businesses involved in this because there's so many facets to cybersecurity that we can bring this forward. We can make this happen, but it's happening today in the fact that companies are coming to San Antonio specifically, specifically, to be a part of this community because they're hearing about it and they want to be a part of this energy here. 
Finally, I'm going to talk about cultural wealth. What is cultural wealth? The fact that we have so many different and diverse communities here in town that can be serviced by this particular aspect of cybersecurity. We can look at these dis what, we, what some might consider disadvantaged communities, and we can look at them and say, how can we help them? What would happen if we put a job training center and a daycare center and a job capability with small businesses onto the south side and we said, hey, come into where you are and come into this and learn and to do this job and get yourself a good employment system in the community they're in so they don't have to go somewhere to be able to get this. Wouldn't that be a wonderful example of how you can pull those communities up and give those disadvantaged communities certain ac abilities and capabilities to propel themselves forward? But you get the right mentors in place, you get the right people in place to help them. That's what I'm talking about, building cultural wealth with cybersecurity. So those are those three areas, human wealth, economic wealth, and cultural wealth that can come about as a result of something that some people, as Victor just pointed out, a lot of people consider scary. Because obviously there are people out there who want to get your information. They want to have you, they want to take this information from you, but you must stop them. You must keep them from getting that information from you, no matter what you can do. So we ought to be able to do these types of things and pull this together for San Antonio, because it will benefit San Antonio and the nation and the world. Next, the next part I want to talk about, though, I want to hit very specifically on a certain specific example. So what I want to talk through is, we have these targets of opportunity, but let me bring out one specific. There's a gentleman by the name of Ricky Bonda. Ricky Bonda is a kid from the South Side. South Side ISD, correct, Chris? Southwest ISD, thank you. And in fact, he was a member of this ITSA program that I just described earlier. He is, in fact, from a broken home that he took to technology from a very young age. He was this ITSA student, but you know what? There was a competition being run by the Air Force Association in DC called the Cyber Patriot Program. At the high school level, this is a cybersecurity defense competition. And what they do is these kids get together at various levels. It started in the R junior ROTC programs and grew out later to others. But they build and defend a network. And so when they build and defend a network, they come together as teams, they come together in competition. And in San Antonio, we just last year had our first annual Mayor's Cup in San Antonio. The Cyber Cup was awarded. Guess who won the Cyber Cup last year? Ricky Bonda and his ITSA team. Okay? So here's this kid. He comes into this situation where the technology he loves, he can be a part of. He's given a great opportunity to earn college credit. He's given an opportunity to be a part of a team that does this, and he wins the city. What does he do then? They go to D.C. as a part of the national competition. Guess what? Where did that team place in the national competition in the non-JROTC department? Third in the nation. Okay? Third in the nation from San Antonio, from a school that was started to help kids come out of the normal school system and build this up. So you have these types of capabilities, but what's really great about this entire thing is two things. First of all, this summer that entire team worked at the Air Force Computer Emergency Response Center on Lackland Air Force Base. They were given internships for all summer. So they were actually able to apply this specifically, okay? And then what, we, what happened was, we realize this is a repeatable model. Whether it be this program or whether it be one of the other high school programs that gives them certifications and gives them opportunities and internships, it is repeatable. And so we can extend this out and make this happen across a lot of different areas. Now I could take on a lot of different perspectives on this and I could, I could preach forever because I know that this message is going to get to you and you're gonna wanna spread this message as disciples of the gospel of cybersecurity. <laughs> But I will not go on some of the other places we could go with this because I really don't have the time and you don't have the energy and you've had way too much coffee. But what I want to hit, the, the last thing I want to hit in here is, in fact, what does this really relate to? What's the most important factor I can tell you about this? This concerns you. It concerns you directly. It concerns you because it really is a part of your everyday existence and the information that you use and need. The IT that you use and need every day. Could any one of you in this audience truthfully tell me that you can do without your IT every day in some form or fashion? Who can really do without it? You can, sir? Terrific. I am very proud of you and I wish I could take myself off the grid, but by God, I can't live without this thing. And my wife would never let me live without this thing. But I'll tell you, it was amazing to me when I could be driving down a road on my way back from North Carolina, having, dropped, having gotten my son on a plane for Afghanistan, 
We were in, I think, Tennessee, and I was actually able to talk to him on Facebook when he was sitting in Manas, Kyrgyzstan, and in real time talking to him. It's a great capability, but it also is a very, very vulnerable capability. You need to learn to protect yourself, you need to learn to protect your family, you need to learn to protect your information, and ultimately we can use this not only as a need to, to fight threats that are out there and vulnerabilities, but to build ourselves, our society, our city, our region, and our nation up through cybersecurity of all things. Ladies and gentlemen, please take the opportunity to go get yourself some more coffee, relieve yourself of your morning's pains, but I do appreciate your time and effort this morning, and may we continue with a great TEDx.